Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this video is on two-dimensional arrays, uh, continuing my course on Node.js and JavaScript for beginners. So uh, a two-dimensional array is like a table. We've already seen one-dimensional arrays. That's like a list of things, but we can create multi-dimensional arrays and um, of those, 2D arrays are by far the most common. So we write here, use strict as usual. And let's create a 2D array. A 2D array is basically a, a normal array, a one-dimensional array like the one we've already seen. I'm just going to clear this console. Um, except that uh, in a 2D array, each of the elements in the array are themselves arrays. So I'll create a variable. Let's call it animal table. And I'm going to set it equal to some animals. Um, it's going to be a 2D array of animals. So to initialize it with values here, um, I'm going to create an array. But the thing is now, let's create some blank space here. I'm going to create, I'm going to, the elements that I'm going to put in this array are themselves going to be arrays. So uh, this is this is very much like a table. So for the first row, we have square brackets to denote another array. And in there, I'm going to put dog and cat. And then let's have another row in here. Let's have some exotic animals on the second row. So let's have exotic, I mean, for someone like me who comes from England. Uh, so giraffe, elephant, and um, rhino, maybe. So what is this? It's like a table of animals, and, and we call it a two-dimensional array, and you'll see why shortly. Uh, so how do we access elements in this two-dimensional array or table? Well, we need two subscripts to refer to each element, and that's why it's called a two-dimensional array. Dimensions just refers to basically the number of indexes um, that you need to specify the position of an item in an array. So let's do console.log. Now, if I write animal table and we use one index, um, we're going to be referring to elements. So the elements in this outer array here are themselves arrays. This is an array. It's element zero. Element one here, that's an array as well. So if I output element zero only, Let's run it. We get dog and cat. And element one would be giraffe element rhino. Um, but because, so this value is an array, we can use another, another index to get particular items out of this array. So if we stick with maybe element one, that's this thing here. Supposing we want elephant. Well, within within this subarray, this is element zero, this is element one, this is element two. Let's output element one. So let's write one again here. And then we've got elephant. Elephant. If we try two within that second array, we've got rhino. Um, and by the way, uh, something that I don't think I mentioned in my video on 1D arrays is that you can set elements in the array after you've created it. In fact, it's common to do that. We'll be looking at more of that later on. But for example, supposing I want to change uh, this rhino element to some other animal. I can do it like this. So we have animal table and we want to go to the we, that's row zero, that's row one. So we want row one. So we put one in square brackets. And then within row one, we want element zero, one, two. So we put two in square brackets. And we can set that with an equal sign with the assignment operator to something else. Uh, so we could put in here, um, let's say, capybara. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. One of those giant friendly rat-like creatures. 
Now let's do console.log animal table one and two. So row one, column two, basically. And now we can see that we've changed Rhino to Capybara. So um, we, we declared a variable and we set it equal to an array. So we've initialized the variable with a 2D array and we output this um, value here, which was Rhino at row one, column two. Or in other words, it's the first, ele it's the element one within this outer array. So that's element zero, element one. And it's the second, it's element, sorry, it's element index two within this. So zero, one, two, which is Rhino. We output that and we get Rhino. Then remember the interpreter is working downwards through our program, the node interpreter. Um, so then we change it to Capybara and we output the value of that and we get Capybara. Uh, so you can do this as well with 1D arrays. You can change the values within them. How would we actually output the whole of a two-dimensional array? Well, that's a little bit complicated, at least if you're a beginner. So I think we'll look at that in the next video. But the thing to do now is practice creating 2D arrays and accessing elements within them. So don't forget you can also... Um, Use, you can also get the elements out and store them in variables. So we could write, for example, here, let animal equal like this, just storing the value in a variable. And then if we want to, we could output console.log animal. So that does the same thing as before. So if you're a beginner, definitely you want to practice this. Practice um, creating two-dimensional arrays so you can have as many rows as you like, and within each row you can have as many columns as you like. Uh, some languages would force you to have the same would force you to have the same number of uh, elements in each row. But in JavaScript, you can create what we call jagged two-dimensional arrays, where the different rows have different lengths. It's not a problem. Um, so you want to practice that with different numbers of rows and columns and check that you can get the elements out, you can access them or dereference them, and uh, check that you can set elements correctly. And uh, if you practice that for a little bit, uh, it will start to make sense to you. And then I think in the next video, we'll look at how you'd actually write loops that could output the whole content of a two-dimensional array, and we'll look at nested loops.